Uh, going into town, Squire. Am I right? Yeah. Uh, I've got this bag. Hang on a sec. Yeah, right, let me, um... Oh, <laughs> Roller skates, would you believe? <laughs> Is that a fact? For the kids, you know. I picked them up cheap. Oh, don't tell me, uh, we're a bloke in a pub, eh? <laughs> You're not from round these parts, are you? Huh? You're from the smoke, am I right? Yeah, that's right. <laughs> I'm very good on accents, mate. Mm -hmm. Got it off my dad. Mm -hmm. He was a steward on the Isle of Man Ferry. Mm -hmm. Met a lot of very interesting people. Mm -hmm. I bet. What trade are you in, then? Uh, uh, let me guess. You're in the building trade, am I right? Uh, uh, <laughs> Bricky. No, no, Clark no, works, no? No, no, no. I'm, uh, I'm not in the building trade, no. Oh, I'd have put money on it. <laughs> what line are you in, then? Oh, you know, uh, bit of this, bit of that. Uh, anything what brings in an honest penny, eh? Yeah, that's right. <laughs> I've saved myself. The trouble is, it's such a dishonest world, isn't it? Oh, yeah, yeah. You won't believe how many dishonest people I know in this town. <laughs> right, villains they are. Mm. Is that right? <laughs> um, town centre, you said, eh? <laughs> oh, sir. Well, what I'm trying to say, sir, is that... I mean, it's inevitable, don't you think? I mean, the very nature of the job. Well, I mean, you can hardly expect someone to be undercover one second and then the next second down in the nick, committing it all to paper. I mean, there's a fox keeper diary. No, 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 so that wasn't meant to be funny. Uh, uh, yes, Mr. Rebel, I'll, I'll see to it at once. Yes, sir. OK, sir. Bye, sir. You busy? Right, it's the local journal. Not special. Fancy jar. Why not? 16th of May, 1978. Let's get down at the pub. Bring Linda. Um, like I was saying, Doug, I'd like to see his worksheet from the Orient so I can check his alibi. Mr. Edward yeah. Conto? Okay, cheers. Bye bye. Um, yes. No, Doug's already checking. Yeah. Bye bye. Yes. Okay. Singer wants to buy us a drink. I think I really must go. Right. Well, well, if it isn't the poltergeists. <laughs> Is this one of the days you materialise, then? Keep trying, Sarge. And one day, if you're very lucky, you might come up with a funny. Fuck. Cheers. Cheers. When did I last see your pocketbooks? Pardon? Well, it's a simple question, I'll ask again. When did I last see your pocketbooks? Spring, summer, autumn? Well, what's the point, Sarge? There's nothing in mine. Well, hardly. Same goes for mine. What's all this about pocketbooks, Sarge? Huh? Uh, I've used one notable metaphor, I may as well use another. <laughs> From now on, I'm going to run a title ship. A putter ship. I know. You're going to put us all into uniform, aren't you? Little sailor suit. From now on, you're going to use your pocketbooks like real policemen do. You, you, and even Bullman. Now he's fully recovered. Well, fill in all the relevant details of your assignments, your movements, and at the end of every job, you will make out a full report. Understood? But, sorry. But, the... me, no, but, Linda. There's a good girl. Cheers. Look, Sergeant, you can't have it both ways. One minute you're butting us out among the populace like vagabonds. Right. I mean, the way I wander about the streets sometimes, people are beginning to think I'm on the game. The next minute you're expecting us to be... bloody clerks. Right. Well, you can see what's happening, can't you, Linda? It's as plain as a giraffe in a playpen. He's missing what all these bureaucrats miss. Bureaucracy. I want to know what you're all doing, where you all are, all of the time. It's not too much to ask, surely? Let me know when you break your arm, pal. And I just might be daft enough to take it on again. Yeah, I'll put an ad in the Times. Yeah, do that. Okay, all right. Hello there, George. Hi. 
Showing a profit already, eh? Am I right? No, I'm, uh, I'm out of practice, really. Uh, fancy a game with me? Yeah, why not? I'm, uh, I'm not much of a player, really. Right. Too much sex, I think. Uh. <laughs> you found the place easily enough, then? Yes, everybody seems to know the Empress Billiard Hall. Ah, uh, well, they would. There's not many billiard halls left these days. Am I right? <laughs> Progress does have its innocent victims. Like love. Yeah. And we black. Pink. Right. Your call. Heads. Tails. Right. <sighs> oh, crafty. And well, life isn't all wham bam, thank you, ma'am, Des. For instance, you think how effective a tiny flea can be. Trapped inside a jock strap. <laughs> uh, I meant what I said last night, you know, George. I can definitely put something your way. I've got a lot of connections in this town. First class connections they are, too. What are you looking at in there? Singer's face. All distorted and ugly. Very much like it normally is, really. I wish you'd stop it. <laughs> I either look at Singer in here, or I look at Foster over there. Huff and puffer and bloody proc. Who? Something I read in Tippets, I think. Let me get you another drink. I hate to see a man cry. I wonder what Bullman will have to say about Singer's proclamation. Oh, yeah. Something fairly trenchant, I should imagine. Yeah. Same again, Chief. <laughs> Take me to your leader, eh? <laughs> hey, I reckon you were as good as that uh, Hurricane Higgins. Mm. There's a fella just come in, George. One of the connections I was telling you about. Oh, yes. Like me to introduce you to him? Yeah, I don't know. I've, uh, I've already mentioned your name. Uh -huh. Gary, have you a moment? Nice one. Kenny didn't do it any better against Bruges. Oh. Kenny. Kenny Dalglish, the Liverpool striker. A cracking goal he scored in the European Cup. You'd think of canonising him for it, you know. Oh, that Kenny. Who's your friend, Tess? Uh, it's that fellow I was telling you about, Gary. George Green. He's from the smoke. The smoke? Arsenal? West Ham? Oh, dear, oh, dear. Uh, Gary Baines, George. How do you do? Are you just flash or are you really good? He's very, very good, Gary. Am I right, George? Well, let's see then, shall we? Ta. Pleasure, Gary. Carry on then, George. Oh. Even Kenny misses sometimes. <laughs> hey. <laughs> you got some competition now, Squire. I'm all right, Gary. Piss off, eh, Des? Go and watch Chamber or something. Hey? This is private from now on. I was hoping... I said piss off. But I found a... Uh... Piss off, Des. I'll not tell you again. Nobody called himself. It's a bloke on the phone for Mr. Willis. Pansy Potter. <laughs> You've had two 
too big a stock, George. Uh, Next time, no way. Eh? We'll see. Mm -hmm. Aren't you uh, forgetting something? What? I'd have quit on that game with Des. You'll have to get it from Des, then, won't you? Bag of crisps, love. Smoky bacon. Yeah, but I beat you. Yeah, of course you did. Top. Do you ever get out of there once they get in? Not often. You fancy a package, George? Yeah, why not? Barbecue. Jess tells me you did him a favour last night. Ah, oh, nothing really. Just give him a lift, that's all. There's a project in the wind. Might just need a bloke like you. Like me to put you on the list of applicants? Yeah. Why not? Pansy Potter. I mean, what kind of a cool name's that for a fella? Camp. Look, you're in dead trouble if Singer finds out. Do you know we're not supposed to have snouts in this caper? They come with the fish eyes and the lack of faith in human nature. Yes, but a snout to be a snout has to know you're a policeman. It's essential, like rainbow is to trout. Like our beer and grub, dear. What do you eat where you come from, eh? <laughs> Mars bars. <laughs> and we don't want people knowing we're policemen now, do we, Derek? Look, I'm keeping my snout. He might just come in useful one day. Seen Bullman recently, Willis? No. Well, not for a couple of days. Well, I think somebody should, don't you? You like the motor? Mm. Nice. This year's model, you know. Very nice. Oh, bloody hell. What's up? The law. So? You're only doing 13. You haven't got your arm around me. Yeah, Ducky, but uh, it's not exactly my motor. Hang on. holiday for five years. Won't leave his whippet. What's it called again? Agios Nikolaios. Agios Nikolaios. I'll work on him tonight. Hey, if I get a tan like yours, he might forget about his bloody whippet. Bye-bye, madam. And she could get a tan like yours, couldn't she, Debbie? From where you get it. Cyril don't pay me enough to go on holiday, does he? And I can get him cost. Don't upset the lower classes, there's a good boy, Gary. I have enough trouble with her as it is. Yeah, but eh, uh, she looks fantastic. Must be good for business. Something's got to be good for business this time of year. Well, eh, uh, never mind, Cyril. Soon be retiring. Another couple of years, Gary. And it's America, here I come. California. Hollywood. 
Might even be living next door to Rock Hudson. Well, how's the recruiting coming for our current project? Well, uh, I think I've cracked it now. There's me to do the actual thieving as per. Chris Fisher to climbing, Phil Smart lookout, and a new bloke to take care of any aggro. What new bloke? His name's Green, George Green. One word from me and you do just as you want. Hello there, Mr. Willis. If it isn't Pansy Potter. Look, uh, I'm not altogether too happy with my code name. It's a bit... Well, I feel ridiculous when people say who's speaking and I say Pansy Potter. Hang on. Shut up! I'll show you how to do it anyway. You're trying to go too high, you. How about, uh, Bill Poster? Bill Poster. <laughs> I like it, Mr. Willis. <laughs> them all your kids? Well, they're all the wives. I, uh, I don't get it. I've been inside a lot, haven't I? Oh. Right, what do you got for me? It's very big, Mr. Willis. Is it? Very big. A big name. A big man in this town. Go on. He's organising a project. A project? That's the way he talks. Does he? What project? Well, I'm not exactly sure yet. When? It must be soon. Oh, dear, what's the matter now? How do you mean? Hang on to Charlie. <coughs> Feeling sick. They're, uh, they're getting a team together. There you go. Hang on, this one isn't hey, Nick, it's is all it? mine. Yeah, it'd have to be, wouldn't it? But won't be long before we're looking at new ones, eh, George? You know that. You're a very lucky fella. Could I have a word? Isn't it time you were climbing back in your UFO? <laughs> <laughs> What's happened to your mate, by the way? The big fella. Lurch. <laughs> <laughs> you and your little quip, Sarge. Don't think I think you're funny. I don't. Swanning up here, lounging about, trying to look mysterious. But that's not what this job's about. It's about getting to know your patch, for one thing. It's about... Long nights in sour pubs, so you know what's going to happen, even before it bloody happens. Funny you should say that. I was just going to tell you about something that's going to happen. And on this patch, as a matter of fact. <laughs> Still here, Debbie, love. You were open and pop back, weren't you? Admit it. Oh, yeah. I mean, my life's empty without you. Oh, don't know. It's too much responsibility. Do you, Mel? How you doing, Bug? This way, George. We need to get that sun tan from this time of the year. Oh, what is in the Bahamas? Does she commute to us today? A sun lamp, George. Siddle sends her to a boarding house in Blackpool once a year. And she keeps warming it up. That right, Debbie? Get lost. Ooh, silver tongue, girl. What's that fellow doing? What am I going to do with you, Bulk? Come here. Thank you. Sit down, George. Thank you. You look as though you could do with a holiday. <laughs> I could do you a week in Mallorca for not much more than it costs to get your shoes sold these days. Oh, I get prickly heat in warm countries. We'll have to do you something in Alaska then, won't we? Uh, Customer lost is a profit lost, eh, Gary? Not to mention a house in Hollywood, eh, Siddle? My mecca, George Hollywood. Oh, uh, really? The nearest thing the human race has come to paradise. Don't you agree? Um, hmm. What do you want? Sun lamp time, isn't it? Couldn't you take it home with you tonight? What, and have it go on our electricity bill? My dad'd be round here with an offensive weapon. Me ma'am. So, you want to join us? Why? Why? 
They must have some reason, some motive, money, glory, ambition. Or money, I suppose. Weren't you making enough in London? Yes, but I just wanted a change of scene. What qualifications have you got? Well, no actual um, qualifications as such. Special skills of any sort? Uh, no, none. Education? Um, that's school at 15. Grammar school? Secondary modern. No, just factory fodder, aren't you, George? Are you married? Um, no, N not now. No stabilising home background either. I'm not impressed, George. I'm not impressed at all. He's ace with the snooker cue. I'm not surprised. I don't suppose you have any references of any kind? Um, sorry? No. I think I'm going to have to say we're sorry too, George. Couldn't we uh, give him the intelligence test still? You never know. He might just need coaxing out of him. I mean, one or two of the Reds have signed up look like Dumbos, but after half a dozen games, magic. Yes, I'm quite prepared to take an intelligence test. I'm uh, rather good at them, actually. All right. We'll see what your general knowledge is like. What did Scarlett O'Hara say to Rhett Butler at the end of Gone with the Wind? Well, George? I I've no idea. She said, tomorrow is, is another, another day. day. I'm off for a nosh. That's a good idea. Would I be in the way? Not tonight, no. Um, can anybody come or is it a private soiree? Oh, well, we don't have private lives anymore, do we, Sergeant? Oh. That's right. We'll go to that chippy where Bullman's always making a pig of himself. That's a good idea, isn't it? You don't seem to be doing very well, George. Should I ask him a question? I don't think so, Debbie. Well, no, uh, let her. Um, I mean, why not? What's the mean temperature in Funchal in August? It's not a film question, George. I've no idea. I'm not even sure where bleeding Funchal is. It's in Madeira, stupid. I'm uh, sorry, George. I don't think there's any point in going on with this. You don't seem to meet the intellectual standards we require. He uh, could be very handy, Siddle, the size of him. He could be all blubber. Why not let Bulk see if he is? Nothing lost, Siddle. Give us some sport anyway. Yeah. I still say we're wasting our time. Get Bulk. I like the cigarettes. Bulk? Oh. What, uh, what, uh, what exactly do you have in mind for me and Hulk? All in good time, George. Little extramural job for your book. I want to know what he's made of. Okay, Mr. Smedley. Give him a contest. Well, I can try. Cheating, George. On three. One, two, three. Up the reds. Eight seconds. Well done, mate. Very good, George. Well, 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 well. How very nice. Do you mind if I join you, people? Oh, do. Darling little trattoria, what? Eh? Where have you been these past couple of days? Oh, out and about, you know. It's not good enough. No surveillance, actually. I thought I spotted a caper. Not so sure now. It's still not good enough. Well, it's the truth. Right. 
Let's open your pocketbook then. Entered up tonight, and on my desk, fresh as a daisy, first thing tomorrow morning. Pocketbook? What the hell are you talking about? All in the cause of efficiency. We've said our piece. Your turn, George. All right, Sergeant Singer, I'll, uh, I'll write out reports. I'll fill in the pocketbook. But I take it it's not for your eyes alone, this, uh, this pocketbook thing, eh? Yeah, well, obviously, uh, somebody, somebody in higher authority oh, will want to take the occasional peep. Oh. He's being pressurised by Rainbow. I make my own administrative decisions. Oh, in that case, I mean, somebody who counts is going to look at it, and uh, I take it this goes for us all. We can be out of a job very soon. Why? Well, you take today, for example. I'm driving through town looking for international crooks. And I spot this geezer with a brand new 26 inch television set with it on the road in a pram. So I decided to keep him under observation. About half an hour later, he wheels it into St. Ignatius's Presbytery. It's a prize that he's giving for the weekly Beetle Drive. Turns out uh, he bought it for a quid from a woman who's trying to get her own back and her husband for staying out all night. The priest confirmed it. Father Flanagan, oh, a lovely man, with a great passion for the ballet and a thirst for Irish whiskey. And when he just left him. Now, that's a, not an unreasonable way to spend a day, you must admit, Sergeant Singer. In fact, uh, it's quite civilised. But how would all that look in a pocketbook, I asked myself. I don't believe any of that. Not a word. Well, it's all I could put in a pocketbook for today. Stop playing games, Bullman. But I'm not. <laughs> what I do? It was a bit stronger. A priest with a passion for ballet. You know, we're going to have to give in in the end. Oh, very likely we might have to give in, Miss Doran. But not without a fight. You know, I'm quite enjoying myself being the poor man's James Bond. You've got something private on the go, haven't you? Got... Oh, hark who's talking. What's your brand paper then, George? Well, let's say I've, um... I've crossed the floor of the house. I'm running with the opposition. For the moment. Gary? Cyril. It's all set for tonight. They're all off to Paris for a long weekend. I booked it personally, so the house will be empty. Well, can't you get somebody else? I know it's short notice, Gary, but use your initiative, or I might start thinking it's time to give you an intelligence test, and it won't be on Liverpool Football Club. Hello, Des, my old son. Got it? You know, I've been looking for you for a couple of days. Uh, why is that? Well, uh, I've got a little job for you, as a matter of fact. A project. Is that right? In, Des. Oh, hello there, Mr. Willis. Sorry, I can't stop for a chat. I've got this rabbit to take to the for one of the kids. Ta da! Get in, Des. Nice uh, motor car, Mr. Willis. TR7, am I right? <laughs> it's an MGP. Where have you been, Des? No, we're special. I've been meaning to get one of them runabout tickets for the railway, but I've never had the ready, you know. <laughs> I've been expecting a call. Oh. What's cooking, Des, with the project? <sighs> nothing. Nothing at all. Dead as a brick, Mr. Willis. I Willis. don't believe you, Des. <sighs> Why would I lie to you, Mr. Willis? I don't know, Des. But you are. If I took a magnifying glass to your pores, I'd see them all boiling and bubbling like little volcanoes. 
Why are you sweating, Des? Me? I'm not sweating, Mr. Willis. I'll ask you once again, Des. What's cooking? It's very embarrassing, Mr. Willis. I'm very broad-minded. They've, uh, they've asked me to join the firm. Go on this job? Yeah. Well, where's the embarrassment? That's great. You're right there on the inside now, aren't you? But exactly, Mr. Willis. So, uh, our little arrangement can't very well go on, can it? Eh? Well, look at it from my point of view, Mr. Willis. They're offering me at least 200, just for acting as lookout. And uh, you're giving me, what, 20 at the very most. 1,000% difference. Am I right? So, I mean, you know how many mouths I have to feed. In fact, the wife's expecting again. <laughs> now, look, Des, you're not in a bleeding job centre. Now, you tell me where and when, or I'll have you on the Isle of Man ferry like your old man before you. Only you'll be tied to the propellers. Now, where? It's a big house in Bury. When? Tonight. Sorry about that. I was, uh, a bit nervous, you know. Uh, always am before the job. I believe Emmeline is the same before a big match. Right, we, uh, meet here at about eight o'clock. Eight o'clock, right. Um, aren't you forgetting something again? Well, we didn't have a bet on, did we? Definitely. I think you're conning me, George. Well, I hope it's good information, Willis. Yeah, of course it is. Oh, and uh, don't go and nick Bill Poster. Bill Poster? My snout. Ah. He might just do you another favour. Mm. Is he a friend of yours, Colin Foster? You didn't say? I ate his gut. He's not exactly wild about you. You don't want to trust him. He thinks you're parasites, underemployed and overprivileged. I'm working on that. Hello? Cyril isn't here, so he... He doesn't come on the actual projects, then, eh? He'd never get any sleep, would he? How do you mean? We don't think this is the only project he's got on. He might have two or three on the go. What, tonight? Well, it's not impossible. So, hey, come on, George. I've got a job for you. Uh, yeah, yeah, right. Hey, remember, any danger, dab the horn a couple of times. But don't go mad. Nice one, George. I knew you'd come in handy. Oi. Bill Poster. Oh, Jesus. That's me. Scarpa. Well, you still have the chance. Thanks. Thanks a lot.
How'd it go then? Last night. Oh dear. A rumble, was it? We nicked two. One scarpered. Oh, not too bad. I mean, not perfect, but probably about average for you. The one who scarpered did this. Nasty. And do you know who I think it was? You'll really laugh when I tell you. Well, who was it then? Your mate, the big fella, Lurch. It's impossible, Colin. It's ludicrous. It just couldn't have been Bullman. There's a circulation out for a fella, and the description fits Bullman to a T, right down to his brown boots. He doesn't wear brown boots. He looks as though he should. I'll identify him as Bullman, and so will my lads. Your mob's up to its neck, singer. And not before time. You're a load of phonies. What are you? Willis. Sir? What's going on? And you can take that choir boy of the uh, look off your face. I want the truth. What went wrong, Debbie? What went wrong? How should I know? My first failure. In your headache any better yet? There's the tension, Debbie. I'm a very angry man. My fingers are beginning to ache. Just another couple of minutes. Oh, that's lovely. Has to be an informer. Has to be. Either Des or the new man. Probably Des. He looks like a rat. Luke, why don't we pop off somewhere quiet till all the fuss has died down? Like Nassau. You wouldn't like the food. You say that about everywhere. You even say it about Gibraltar. I have to have a quiet word with Des. Luke, if you get nit before you've taken me abroad, well, I'll... Gently, Debbie. There's a good girl. I mean it, Cyril. After what I've been through with that bloody sun lamp... <laughs> No, Bullman was under something private. He said as much the other night. This job last night must have been part of it. I just don't believe it, Willis. I don't believe you could be so stupid. Me? What about Bullman? Ah, oh, talk to me about Bullman. My blood pressure can only cope with one case of imbecility at a time. Look, he's just as much to blame as I am. More. Look, leave Bullman out of this. You knew Snouts were out as far as you were concerned, didn't you? Yeah, but the point... But me, no buts, Willis, you knew. Yeah. Yeah. So... Just to get even with Foster. He's never off me back, baiting so, me as his hobby. Just so you can stick two fingers up his nostrils, you cultivate a snout. Bill Poster. <laughs> oh, how corny can you get? I did pay him with my own money, yeah, sir. I should hope you did. You Burke, you. You bloody Burke. Look, there was no harm in it, Sarge. Snouts are necessary to a jack. We'd be nowhere without them, would we? Nowhere. Snouts, Willis, as far as you're concerned, you're different. They're out. Oh, I see. Different in some respects, but not in others. Different when it comes to snouts, but when it comes to reports and keeping a fiddling pocketbook up to date, oh, we have to comply. Then we're not different then, are If you'd oh, no. kept your pocketbook up to date, none of this would have happened. At least I'd have known what Bullman was up to. What the hell was he up to, eh? Going around with a bunch of burglars, carrying a load of swag, whacking a policeman. <sighs> keeping secrets is one thing, Willis, but keeping secrets from each, from each other, no. no. We're, we're all supposed to be a team. Look, we don't know if it was him yet. <sighs> don't we just? Why didn't you contact us and have him nicked in the job? I was going to, but the big man never showed up. It's no good without catching him. You were breaking the law. Since when has that ever bothered you? Times change, Bullman. We've all got our own careers to look after. Well, mine is OK. Be good at a touch of spice to life, Miss Doran. Gets tedious otherwise. Yours isn't exactly dull, George. Mm. It's an extra element of risk. Men need to take risks. It's, it's the spirit that raised them from the primeval slime. Napoleon pushing under Moscow. The Stasi going for that unlikely drop volley. Bill Watson running off with his belly dancer. What are you going to do? There's only one thing to do. What's his name? Smedley. Cyril Smedley. Oh, by the way, there's an old point out in you. Rainbow wants to see you at once. Oh, yeah.
find Bullman before Foster does. Trouble is, nobody knows his new address. New address, too? Yeah, since we've moved you out of that hotel. Um, he never actually got round to that side. I don't believe it. He's still there. No. Well, yes, Sarge. Well, normally I wouldn't shop him, but I reckon he's in a bit of danger now. You better bloody believe it. I know you're hiding him, singer. <laughs> There's no way he can stop me. Smedley, Bulk. Right, disaster last night, wasn't it? A calamity, Mr. Smedley. Any theories? Theories? As to what went wrong. It was all so beautifully planned, right down to the last detail, like one of my idols. I have a theory, Des. Do you, Mr. Smedley? You informed on us. Me? Why would I do that, Mr. Smedley? I mean, I was over the moon to be included. And you know how long I've been waiting for a chance to, uh, to work for you, Mr. Smedley. Am I right? That's true, Des. That's very true. But if it wasn't you, who was it? Uh, it was George, Mr. Smedley. George Green. Got to be. I should never have let myself be persuaded to employ him. It was against my better judgment. Something about the eyes. Not only too close together, but dull, lumpish, simple-witted. I think we'll go and look for George Bulk. But before we do, show Des here what's in store for him. If it should turn out to be him that sold us down the river. Eh? What are you going to do, Mr. Smedley? Hey, Bulk! Bulk! <laughs> Bulk! Get off! Bulk! <laughs> oh, well, you might as well ask him where we can find George while you're at it. Get off! I always met him round here. Terrific. Well, well. George, we were just coming to look for you. Likewise, Mr. Smedley. I reckon we've got a viper in our midst. Oh, oh no. No! <laughs> Where's Singer? He's gone off to Bournemouth's hotel in a squad car. I got your note. What's up? George Bullman's a complete nutter. Where is he? He reckons the only way he can come out of this thing clean is by catching the chief villain all on his own. Well, he's just about dead right, then. He mentioned a travel agency. Sarah Ziddles? Yeah, that's the one. So, we have a problem. What's that? We should info Rainbow and turn Bowman in. <laughs> What's he going to do, Mr. Smedley? Eh? <laughs> now, Des, just tell me the truth, or Bulk will rip your head off your body like a blue bottle. He can, you know. On my mother's grave, Mr. Smedley. On my children's heads. I would never squeal on you. Not with friends like Bulk here just waiting to... to... You know something? I believe him. <laughs> well, somebody blew the whistle on us. Exactly. <coughs> Which only leaves one candidate. I've got to feed the meter, lads, sir. I won't be a minute. Seize him, Bulk. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh. Oh. 
Uh, no sign of life. Place is <clears> shut. <throat> There's a truncheon in the parcels tray wrapped up in a copy of Playgirl. Is that so? Uh, go, Bennett! Uh. Come on, Bonk. Get him back in the billiard hall. Oh! November 1 4 to Central, message over. Tempted to a fortnight and bend it on. This one should never have happened, Bullman. What a balls up! I'll lay off. Gavi and see you, Sparko. If you'd followed my instructions and, and, and not resisted. Sergeant can't hear you. He needs an ambulance. Ambulance? Ambulance? I'll give him bloody ambulance. <laughs> Four days I've waited to deliver this reprimand. I've, I've known it off by heart, word for word. It's kept me going. And now look at him, unconscious. He won't even give me the pleasure of having a go at him. It's bloody typical. I could try to bring him round, Chief. Old some burning newspaper under his nose. Linda's got a copy of Playgirl. Leave it. Is he gone? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. 